Praise God. Bwana sifiwe sana. We thank the Lord. He's been good and kind to us. Uh, it's been a while since last I recorded. And I thank the Lord for this grace that I'll be able to record it today. Uh, we are in the book of Genesis chapter 20. We are going to Genesis chapter 20. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your word, O oh Lord, and bless your people. Lord, meet them at their points of need, our oh Lord. And Lord, may your word even reach and build us and nourish us. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Uh, Genesis chapter 20. Now this is the story of uh, Abraham and Abimelech. So Genesis chapter 20 says, Now Abraham moved on from there into the region of Negev. In the region of Negev and lived between Kedish and Shu. For a while he stayed in Gera, and there Abram said of his wife Sarah, She is my sister. Then Abimelech, king of Gera, sent for Sarah and took her. Uh, just a, a quick recap. We remember previously there was a time when Abram went down to Egypt and uh, said of the same thing that Sarah was the, the sister and then later uh, uh, the king of, e of Egypt realized the truth and then sent Abraham away with some gifts and he wasn't pleased on how Abraham lied now the same thing the same kind of thing again Abraham uh, comes with here to this king Abimelech and he lies to the king of, our, of Sarah being the sister. Let's remember at this point Sarah is 90 years old. And uh, as I said earlier, that the kings of these times, they only picked on the beautiful ladies. They picked only the beautiful ladies. And it seems that even at the age of 90, still Sarah was very beautiful. And as you said, the Lord always preserves. You see, when when the time of the Lord accomplishing something in your life has not just reached yet, He will preserve you. He will keep you young until then. So we see Sarah is 90 years, but she's still very beautiful. She is loved by these kings. So just an encouragement to anybody who is waiting upon the Lord to fulfill something. The Lord will keep you young. The ages, your age will not, will not overlap. You won't grow old until you see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now verse 3 says, But God came to Abimelech in the dream one night and said to him, you are as good as dead because of the woman you have taken. She is a married woman. Now Abimelech had not gone near her, so he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent nation? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And didn't she also say he is my brother? I have done this with a clear conscience and clear hands. Verse 6, then God said to him in the dream, Yes, I know you did this with a clear conscience, and so I have kept you from sinning against me. I praise be to the Lord. Now, uh, just to mention something a little. The Lord saw the clear conscience that uh, Abimelech had, and the word says the Lord preserved him from sinning. Men and women of God, we are always prone to sinning. But there is this time when we desire, and that's why we should always walk uh, every day desiring to do good and asking the Lord to preserve us. Uh, lead us not into temptation. You have that, that kind of a heart, that Lord preserve me this day, Lord keep me from falling this day. Temptation might come, but the Lord will always see our innermost being, our, our inner conscience, and discern from it. 
And then you find the Lord always preserve us in so many ways from not sinning, from not falling into temptation or walking into the temptations. The Lord will always preserve us as he did to Abimelech. Now, it says in verse 7, uh, verse 6, the last part, that is why I did not let you touch her. So the Lord preserving Abimelech. Now return the man's wife. He is a prophet. And he will pray for you. And you will live. But if you do not return her. You may be sure. That you and all. Yours will die. That you and all your people. You will die. If you don't return the wife. Notice in verse 7. The Lord says. Return the wife to the husband. For the husband is my prophet you see this is the first mention of this term the word prophet the one who links people to god who god speaks to and he relays the information to the people the common men the word uh, prophet being mentioned now we know prophecy is a gift of the spirit and now this gifting, as I've said, this uh, where it is first mentioned. So the first mentioned principle, we see the circumstance under which it led to this mentioning. And we see it was not in the good state that Abraham was fasting or offering the sacrifice to the Lord or he was good with the Lord or he was trying to do something uh, in the flesh to, to, to just relay that uh, being on the good side of the Lord being on the favor side of the Lord but it happens when Abram again repeats that same kind of, of um, a fault that he lies to this man and with all reasons even according to men it was right if God could have rebuked Abram before Abimelech and blessed Abimelech and rebuked Abraham. But the Lord says, this is my prophet. Now, when you, uh, when we go to the book of Romans, Romans, it says that the giftings of God, I think chapter 11, verse 20, 29, verse 29 there, right around there, it says that the gifting of the Lord are without repentance. Other version says, the giftings of the Lord. When, when the Lord chooses to graciously gift somebody, he doesn't look back and uh, just come back and pick that gifting. When the Lord decides to gift somebody, he doesn't uh, at one point again say, no, I, I, I did it wrong. I never knew what kind of a person he was. So I'm taking, I'm picking this gift again and removing it from him and giving it to the next person. The gifting of the Lord is without repentance. When he decides to give it, he doesn't look at the present, but he always knows the future. And that's why he gives us. You see, most of us always focuses on our faults of the present, not focusing on the future, but the Lord always sees us in the future. That is love. He sees us in the future. How we've accomplished it. Being glorified. That is how he sees us. And now he decides to graciously. Things we don't deserve. And he just graciously gives Abraham that gifting. That he could speak to Abraham. No matter what Abraham does here. Falling and all that. But still the Lord acknowledges him. And that's why people... Those of us who have been gifted by the Lord and have faltered, have gone into the ways of the world, and you think that you can't still be used by the Lord, may this story be uh, one for you. That the Lord still uses us. But let's remember sin hurts. It hurts and it makes it brings guilt. The enemy will always bring guilt to us and speak in our minds of how we've faltered. And let's not give the enemy the chance. Let us just repent and go to God's throne of grace and ask for mercy and then find rest in the Lord and then resume the work 
This is how the enemy has taken so many people from God's work. We all falter. But we may not feel like doing it again. But let that not be the excuse. Let's pick ourselves up. Speak to your soul. My soul, trust in the Lord. My soul, believe in the Lord. My soul, arise and begin leaping in the Lord. This is not a matter of feeling how we feel. We serve the Lord whether we feel it, we feel okay or not. We should just do it. And people, those of you who have left uh, the worship or other giftings that the Lord gave you and you've abandoned them because of the guilt the enemy has placed in you, I'm here to tell you today, pick yourself up and get in the way again. The Lord loves you. Abraham wasn't right with the Lord here, but the Lord acknowledged him to be the prophet. First mention, the gifting of the Lord is not under good circumstance, but it is in where sin is being noticed. And that's why it's called the gift. It's a grace. We don't deserve it, but the Lord gives us. So I think we all fall under the grace and the giftings of the Lord. So let us just accept and uh, get back into the work and be blessed in Jesus' name. Early the next morning, Abimelech summoned all his officials. Uh, and when he told them what had happened, they were very much afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham in and said, What have you done to us? How have I wronged you that you brought such a great guilt upon me and my kingdom? You have done things to me that should not be done. And Abimelech asked Abram, What was your reason for doing this? Abram, verse 11 says, Abram replied, I said to myself, There is surely no fear of God in this place, and they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she's really my sister, the daughter of my father, though not of my mother. And she became my wife. Uh, and when God had me wander from my father's household, I said to her, This is how you can show your love to me. Everywhere we go, say to me, say of me, he is my brother, people. We see that in sin, sinning before the Lord is not always a fall. It's not a fall like you just walk and just trample like that. But it is always a walk and a planning. Abraham had planned with the wife earlier. In the earlier journeys, even before they began walking, began wandering to the promised land when God had called them, he had planned it with the wife. That any time, any situation when threat will arise, this is how we will handle it. You are my sister, I am your brother. This was a half truth and a half lie, which makes it total lie. It is true Abraham was a half, a half brother to Sarah, but how they were relaying it, it was partly true and partly wrong. And you see, a 1% lie in a 99% truth it makes it all lie. So, uh, men and women of God, let us know that in committing any kind of sin, we always know. And the Lord always gives us the strength and he always gives us the wisdom and he always speaks to us. Take another route. Leave, ignore, abandon this route you are taking. Take this one. But we always walk one step after the other, knowing the thing we are doing. At times we always do some sins or walk away of a kind of a sin, knowing the impacts or the repercussions won't be so bad. We always commit some sins, knowing, because we know the repercussion, we can always manage it, we can always handle it and hold it. Right, we can make a, a little lie and everything will be perfect. I will be 
I will be okay. I will be rewarded for you being my sister. And you, the Lord always will fight for you. And these people will not ever commit sexual offense with you. We will always be okay. The Lord will fight for us. But we see. There is this side or equation that we never put into consideration. That the extent of sin we are involved in is never, the repercussion is never to that extent we think. It always surpasses that. It is always more than. The bad side or the side effects of the sin we commit is always above what we always think the repercussion will result. It exceeds it. As you see from the first, Ishmael resulted. A haggah, the, 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 the mother to Ishmael, it resulted. And they are pain to the Israelites. So people, let us always trust in the Lord. And when the Lord speaks to us, no sin, no temptation uh, that comes your way, uh, it, it is the kind of temptation that always comes to people. You don't face any temptation that no man has ever uh, faced. You face the common kind of temptation people do face. But if they come, let us remember, let us remember, that the Lord always provides a way out. And it is us who always ignores. The good news is the Lord will always forgive and pardon. The bad news is any kind of sin we commit, it always brings that sad light. You see the word says Jesus Christ in, 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 in a simple translation. He was the happiest man amongst men. One of the reasons being it was sinless. You see, sin brings grief. Sin brings grief and pain and hurt. And that's why people, let us walk as the Lord lives, but when we sin, let us remember to rush to God's throne of grace to seek mercy. And forgiveness in Jesus name so um, it says verse 14 then Abimelech brought sheep and cattle and male and female slave and gave them to Abram and he returned Sarah his wife to him this is amazing grace people that even in this kind of a lie the Lord always works everything for our good it's true, it's true. You see, when we say such things, some people do say it makes others to sin more. But the truth is, our God is so, so, so much compassionate. You see, even in this state that Abraham is sinning and faltering, the Lord still works out things that he is blessed with much sheep and goats and all that, and the wife is returned untouched. Double blessing for our trouble. Let us know that side of our God also. He always blesses us. He is good. We can always take some trails and some roads without seeking the Lord. I just thought these people are bad. I just thought these people are worse. And that's why I never pray to ask God's direction. But I tell you people, if you are a man or a woman of God... <laughs> no direction you can ever take that the Lord won't walk with you one step at a time he will be with you warning you but even when you fall he graciously picks you up and restores you he restores you for the hurting you've caused to yourself he always restores you people this is the kind of God we serve but I've told you this when you take such road there are some hurting and pain you cause to your life and people around you to the extent that you never thought it will reach. Praise be to God. Uh, so uh, then he said, verse 15, And Abimelech said, My hand is before you. Oh, sorry. Verse 14, he said, Then Abimelech brought sheep, cattle, and male and female slave, and gave them to Abraham. 
and he returned to Sarah, his wife, to him. Verse 15. And Abimelech said, My land is before you. Live wherever you like. 16. To Sarah he said, I'm giving your brother a thousand shekels of silver. This is to cover for the offense against you. Before all those who are with you, you are completely vindicated. Verse 17. Then Abram prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife and his slave girls, so they could have children again. For the Lord had closed up every womb in Abimelech's household because of Abram's our wife Sarah. Mm. Uh, now, this happened that the Lord had closed the wombs of a, a female. And even the men in that area, they could not bear children. So after this restoration, after the prophet, Abraham had prayed for this uh, king, the wombs were open and the Lord blessed them. Um, the Lord uh, then, now in verse 16, we saw that after um, uh, Abimelech had uh, given Abraham some cattle and animals, then he added, some silver and gave it to Abraham for the curse of Sarah and said you are vindicated like you've been uh, compensated for the harm and the cause of me Abraham lying that you are his sister and me taking you to, into my harem and uh, I was to, to take you as my wife so this is like a compensation to you. Lastly, now that is uh, chapter 20 of Genesis. Uh, let me point something with a story of somebody, a friend shared with me. We see people, again this point I want to repeat, any kind of sin you are committing, currently that you try to find scriptures to support and you've planned it well and you know the extent and you've planned the extent to which it will reach know that the extent will always surpass that the extent will always overwhelm that it will uh, at times Maybe you, you think it will only affect you, but no people around you will be affected with it. Just because of that sin. So this friend who we were sharing with yesterday, and is so much, so much, uh, let me say, addicted to phone. So I was asking, um, <laughs> he can't stay like, let me say an hour without holding his phone and the thing is interested in in the phone is also is internet not just phone but a phone with the internet but not just a phone with the internet but is betting so betting <laughs> now first i don't want to say that uh, to conclude that uh, betting is you know that but i just want to say the accent to some things we always commit that we think are under control, to what extent they can lead. So uh, this brother, he was sharing with me, on how he began betting, and to the extent that he can go even the whole night, betting and stay awake in the day, betting, and no sleep. Sleep is not a problem to him. So one day, he was still in school, and then some uh, the parent they were to 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 sit for the last exams for him to graduate, and then the parent sent him around around eight thousand, and then because of the addiction of betting, he placed the whole thing, and as you know, certain with betting, you know the opportunity, so it all went away that money, and it was for the exams. Now the day of the it was a D day to exam. So he thought 
and he could come up with any way to get this money. So he went and surrendered his phone to some friend and the friend lended him the 8,000 shillings. And remember, he's addicted to the phone. So he can't stay without the phone. So that is another trouble. So he has gotten the money and paid the money, but he doesn't have a phone now. So, like in the lecture hall, he spotted a, a lady. This, this man is a, a good, let me say a good man. He never steals. So because of that pressure, he saw a lady sitting by the window and holding the phone right above the window like this. And so that 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 zeal for the phone and betting got into him and something spoke. Go pick that phone. And he went to cut the long story short and uh, lock the lecture hall from the outside. That no man because men, men can run very fast, so he locked it, so that when people could come to the door, he could make, run and mingle with other people outside. So he went and picked this phone and ran the opposite direction. So when people uh, rushed to the door to open it, they found it locked from inside, and he had escaped. And then he went and... Uh, hid this phone and began betting with the phone. And this girl whom he had stolen from was a classmate. And because he had a good heart, he could go to this girl and encourage the girl. What what kind of the phone was it? The girl said it was Samsung. And he could say, You will you will find it. The owner won't use it. Samsung is highly encrypted. The, the, the thief won't use it. And he could encourage the girl day by day. You will find the phone. You will find the phone. Until one day. So after betting, he, he found some money. And then, now because, sorry, he had exchanged this phone, this Samsung phone with another phone. He had exchanged it because it couldn't be noticed. So he had exchanged the phone. So he bought, he found some money later and then uh, bought his own phone and then went to the one he exchanged this Samsung phone and bought it again and uh, went to the girl's locker and placed it inside. When the girl found it, he went to the girl and told her, I told you the owner will return it. This is just a simple story. I've cut some part, but just to, to the overview of the story. People, there are some things we always do. Just loving the phone. And we see how it made this good man who had no even intention of stealing, to steal because of some addiction of betting and all that. We can always affect people around us with some of the simple things and characters we've embraced in our lives and some tendencies we've embraced in our lives, we can always affect people around us with them to the extent that we never knew we could reach. So people, my message to you these days, let us watch out. The Lord is so loving and forgiving, but when we sin, let us know the extent of that sin we've committed, it will always affect people beyond what we had placed in our mind when we were planning our things. Let's trust the Lord in all the things we do. Let's acknowledge Him and let's ask for Him for help. Let us not think that I thought it and that's why I did it. Let us ask the Lord, speak every moment Let's make our life just flow with the Lord. Lord, I don't understand this. How should I go about this? The Lord is faithful. Whenever we open the door, he always comes in and he answers us. God bless you so much. Uh, till we meet next time. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen.